minutes or so. We're going to talk about section 1.8. This is the last section of chapter 1, and then we get on to chapter 2, where we honestly, we kick it up a notch. Right now, it's a little bit of, it's a lot of review, a lot of review, uh, things we've seen before, which is great. We need to do that. But in chapter 2, we slow down a little, but we get into more heavy material. You get the concept? Right now, it's pretty light, pretty light stuff. So we're going to move on to heavy material in chapter 2. This is the last section of our review for us. And in this section, I'm going to introduce variables to you. You've heard of variable? Variable? You've heard of a variable before? We're going to talk about those. We'll talk about also the difference between expressions and equations. So what do those even mean? We'll talk about that in 1.8. So if you're keeping track, we're starting 1.8 right now. Okay, show of hands, how many people have heard of a variable before? Okay, that's everybody actually. So, what's a variable? A what now? It's like a letter. Yeah, it is a letter. Okay, so first part of our definition, variable is a letter. What in the world are we doing with letters in mathematics? Why do we use these letters? And they're like failing for an unknown number. Great, so it takes the place of some value that we don't know, or a range of values that we don't know. That's exactly the rest of our definition. So what we're saying a variable is, is this letter, like usually x, y, z, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we can use a, anything we want really. We typically stay away from these letters. We stay away from i, because we use i in a different part of mathematics or something else. Uh, we don't really like e, we use that for mathematics somewhere else. We don't like o's, because they look like zeros, that would be silly, right? Certain letters we stick away from, but almost anything else we use as variables at some point. So it's a letter that we're going to use to represent a range of numbers. Doesn't the letter sometimes work off of like what the problem is? Like if there's so many logs, you would use like L or something like that. I've, I've heard of it that way before too. Like if you're working with like there's this many logs and you gotta find this, what is the problem, whatever, and you could use like L. Sure, yeah, it can represent an own unknown quantity. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about here. So it's used to represent a range of numbers or you know what I'll tack on to that. Or an unknown quantity. And or and or an unknown quantity. I'll kind of introduce a, a variable to you to give you an idea about one way it's used. Follow me along up here. What's the answer to this? One. one. What's the answer to this? Undefined. Oh no, two. 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 <laughs> Oh, by the way, I do want to show you something. I'm going to take a little break here, a little pause. Um, on your homework, a lot of you, though I just graded it, just graded it. A lot of you did this thing or this thing, and y'all gave me zero. This was one property we talked about for like five minutes yesterday. Though I can't have you put zero. I cannot have you do that because that's, that's blatantly incorrect. Whenever you see this, something divided by zero or something divided by zero. Either case, what this is, it's not zero, it's called undefined. There's actually no answer. 
This is the case where it says you get 12 bucks, put it in 12, uh, put it in zero bank accounts. How much money is in each bank account? You go, wait a second, I don't have any bank accounts. How am I supposed to be talking about bank accounts? It doesn't even make sense to ask that question. You remember talking about that yesterday? Mm -hmm. Not zero. No. Not zero. Not zero. No, it's undefined. U N D or something. NA really says something a little bit different. Says you can't even, don't even know what this means. Undefined gives us a little better idea. We say that this this point doesn't exist on a graph. We can't. If you were to try to graph this function, you couldn't do it. Um, so we're going to say undefined. So whenever you see something over zero, you're going to put what now? Undefined. Yeah, that's it. Not zero. Just put undefined. Okay. Back to our stuff. One, two. This one? Three. Okay. Now here, here's where I'm going to make the jump. Zero plus one is one, zero plus two is two, zero plus three is three. What's zero plus anything? How much is that going to be? A. So if I have zero plus A, what am I going to get? A. a. Here, A stands for any number you can possibly think of. And that's a way to represent all this information at once. We'd say, okay, well, instead of writing, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, and 0 plus 3 is 3, and giving every possible example, we can list that all at once and say 0 plus A is A, and that does it for us. So here A is used to represent every number you can possibly think of in the world. So A here is our variable. Next thing we're going to talk about is what's called an algebraic expression. Say algebraic with me, by the way. Algebraic. Good. That sounds pretty fancy, algebraic expression. All this really means is a math statement that has variables. A math statement could be things that are multiplied together, added or subtracted, or even exponents. Anything that has to do with numbers combined with variables put together, that's an algebraic expression. So we're going to say a math statement that involves variables. involves variables, which we just talked about. I'd like to give you a couple examples of some algebraic expressions, just so you see them. Some of them we've already even dealt with. When you see something like this, it's an algebraic expression. It's got the number 7, it has a plus in the middle of it, it's that same, we, we do something there, and it has this y at the very end, which is our variable in this case. So that's an algebraic expression just by its very nature. Well, we could do something like that, 6 times x. Is it possible to have more than one variable at the same time, do you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah we could do something. We could do 3 times b minus 1 plus a. Now, do we know what y is in this case? No. Do we know what x is in this case? No. No, or A or B, we don't know what any of those things are. And you know what, for right now, we can't find them because we don't have what's called an equation. You're going to learn the difference between an expression and an equation probably tomorrow, uh, where, where we talk a lot about that. But for right now, we really cannot solve these. You can only solve equations. You can evaluate, remember that word evaluate? I told you what that meant last time. It means plug in numbers and figure out a, num uh, a numerical answer. We can evaluate expressions, which we're going to do in just a second, but we can't actually solve them. We can't find out what the variable is. You can only take numbers and plug it into the variable. Do you see the difference? 
We can't solve these things. I'll show you solving at, at a later date. For right now, we can just manipulate them. Okay, one more thing we get in, or before we get into evaluating, and that's this. We need to know what that actually means when I say 3x. 3 times x. Yeah, there's an operation there, and you're exactly right. Whenever you have a number next to a variable with nothing in between it, what it is implying is that you're going to multiply the 3 times whatever value you substitute into x. That's a multiplication problem right there. Nod your head if you're okay with that, that we're actually supposed to multiply there. Good, okay. So what 3 times x means, or what 3x means, is 3 times x. So if you look back at these problems that I have up here, these expressions, is there a different way I could write 6 times x? Yeah, just six times. Great. There's also a different way I could write 3 times b. I could just write it. 3b. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly right. So when we see this, it's synonymous with 3 times x. Also, this works if you have two variables right next to each other. We mean there you're going to take the x times the y. Hey, also. We haven't talked about this yet, but do you suppose that exponents work with variables as well? Yeah. Yeah. So when I say, how would I say that, by the way? X, 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 squared. X squared. X squared, that's how I'd say it, or X to the second, second power. power. Perfect. And it, what it means is, I think, uh, Jeff, you had that. It was X and X. perfect. Not X, not X times Y. I made a mistake there. And we can do this with any exponent we want. If we add y to the fifth, that would just be y times y times y times y times y, all five times. So the same idea of exponents works also with variables. Now, we're going to talk about this thing called evaluation, how to evaluate expressions. And we'll end there today. Here's what evaluate means to you. It means substitute, or you can think of it kind of like plugging in. It means plug in the number I give you to the variable that's, that's shown in your expression. Are you guys with me on this? I'll say it one more time so it kind of sinks in. Evaluate. I'm going to say that on your test. If you don't know what evaluate means, you might not know what to do here. So whenever you hear or you see the word evaluate, what it means in math is you're going to take the number I give you, plug it into the variable in your expression and work out to get a solution there, okay? Hopefully not a solution, a numerical answer. That's what you're trying to do. So evaluate means plug in a value, plug in a given number to your variable. Let's give this a try. We're going to start off kind of slow to make sure you really understand the idea of evaluation and we'll work our way up. So if I ask you to evaluate this, 